They dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, Francois Hugo is fighting for the lives of the seal population of South Africa. His unusual approach and love for these creatures has created a close bond with them. Two-month-old seals JT, Alpha, and Amigo are his first attempt to raise three pups at once. The bottom line is that we have a family and we are building a family, and, and that is the way things work. My baby's hungry. Rare white tiger baby Peepo was abandoned by his mother, and he's more than a handful for his foster parents. Will the rambunctious baby be able to reintegrate with other tigers soon? With his size and temperament, this is pretty much the only moment in the day that he rests and lets his adoptive mother enjoy his company. It's early morning and Francois Hugo is already checking for signs of his seals. For the past nine years, He's dedicated himself to the Cape Fur Seals in Hout Bay, near Cape Town, South Africa. It's another day full of trials and tribulations at his makeshift rescue center in the basement garage of a fisheries company. My baby's hungry. His latest foundlings are JT, Alpha, and Amigo, three seal pups that he found starving on an island in the bay. It's a challenge, but Francois has gained the trust and confidence of these three highly sensitive animals. When I approach them, the first thing they want to do is get your scent. But uh, for example, if I now go and use a new soap or a new hair lotion or something and I put it on, you'll see the reaction that they, they do. I mean, because then now they're getting overwhelmed by these different smells. In the wild with their mothers, their mother doesn't change her scent. Um, that they're born with it, it's a constant scent that is generated around them, and that's what makes them feel secure and happy. Now it's time for some much needed breakfast for these three. The female alpha isn't excited, she's just starving. Three times a day, Francois prepares a meal of freshly pressed warm sardine juice for his babies. Cold breakfast just wouldn't do. coming. If they're suckling on the mother, it would be a lot, it would be at body temperature about 36 degrees. So we do the same sort of thing here. Um, that's why we always boil the water and, and warm it up first so that they, they have an idea of the, if it's cold and they'll react different. Look at me. We all use silly focus. They all use silly things. Francois tries to copy Mother Nature as closely as possible, even during meal times. The fat content of this mixture isn't quite the same as it is in nature, but JT, Alpha, and Amigo don't seem to notice the difference. Even the unpleasantness of the hose doesn't prevent these three from enjoying such a yummy meal. All this started when Francois found an entangled baby seal in front of his trawler nine years ago. No one wanted to help the animal. So we started helping him ourselves and I managed to cut the fishing lines off him and I had to like take little pieces out of his body. Um, and he was then just, he just lay on the water after I freed him and he was basically just dying because he was so weak. So we managed to get food into him and get him to eat. And then he basically just stayed around and, and that little seal taught us everything. Um, about how they need to be rehabbed, that you don't capture them, that you keep them in the wild, that they don't become dependent. Um, and we, uh, it was an amazing thing with that animal because as I said, I was clueless and he led me down the path of, of seal rehabilitation. But there are plenty of life and death situations for these seals in the wild. And Francois has to make his daily round to check on his released foundlings in the bay. No. We're not in the wilds of India, where this rare breed of tiger used to make its home. Pipo, a five-month-old white tiger, was abandoned by his mother at a Spanish zoo. Now he makes his home with Regina Hamza and her husband, animal caretakers at the Serengeti Park near Hanover, Germany. 
Over the years, the Hamzas have raised over 20 wild cats in their home. There's nothing like the joy of playing with a baby tiger. Regina just has to watch Pipo's strong jaw. If he gives her a love bite, she ends up with major bruises. When I observe his behavior, I feel really proud that I got him to this stage. He's a good size, and he's beautiful. And it's a great feeling to see his temperament and playfulness develop. I love him. Pipo is growing into quite the rambunctious tiger. And there's never any rest for Regina or her husband. Pipo gets into everything and is constantly on the prowl for new adventures. Unfortunately, the brunt of Pipo's playtime often is Regina's husband. But he manages to take his energetic baby's constant assaults in stride. Pipo never rests. His playroom becomes a flurry of activity, too. After all, one might miss something, especially with such a tempting view of the outside. These days, Playtime is getting a little too much to handle, even for Regina. It looks like Pipo is growing up faster than anticipated. It's really time to let Pipo go. If Regina doesn't want her husband or herself to become part of the dinner menu. One shouldn't forget that this baby's a wild tiger and not a household cat. His education is very lax. You can see that in his behavior. It might seem strange, but if we raised him like a pup, he'd become domesticated, and that means he couldn't be put back in the wild, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. What can one do with a lovable but impossibly wild baby like this? Pipo doesn't know it yet, but the Hamzas will have to think of something fast. A major driving force in Francois's life is his passion and love for the seals. If he could, he'd love to save all of them. But even the pier at Hout Bay provides more cases than he can handle. Besides his three current foundlings, Francois still cares for the 10 seals that he's released back into the wild over the past nine years. One of the great dangers for the seals are the fishing lines from the boats. These can cause great injuries and eventual death by suffocation. Francois is trying to free one seal from this horrible fate today. But in order to help, he must first gain the trust of the animal. This is a difficult procedure at the best of times, and even more difficult with an injured animal. I can see by, by his behavior that he's not, he's very nervous. So I won't even try and free him now. You'll watch when I go closer now. So we slowly get his confidence coming back up again. The seals give you one chance. And if you, if you destroy that trust, then that's it. So you have to rather work and build little steps with them, and then you have a total normal working relationship, even though they're wild animals. They allow you to touch them, handle them. Like, for example, this guy, you won't be able to approach any bull like that. He'll be aggressive and bite because he, you're not working with him. Where, for example, Bull, because uh, we have a working relationship, then he won't allow this with anybody. Okay? He knows now it's me. If you came down, he'll swing around and bite. Um, so, it's all came up with. It's all about trust and a feeling of safety with these sensitive creatures of the sea. 
and Francois has a special knack for handling these loving animals. So it's always small fish. So Unfortunately, fishing lines are not the only danger for the Cape Seal. Fishermen and whalers make a sport out of hunting them as well. These guys you see going out here now, you'll see that they'll scream and shout and they hate seals. And they'll shoot six to ten seals every trip. They absolutely hate seals. Now, there's not much stock today, but normally there's 400 boats that will leave like that with six people on each, and they all got guns on them and they all shoot. Francois frequently heads outside the Bay Area to check on the seal colonies. Seal babies often lose their mothers and drown on these rugged rocks. It seems hard to believe, but during the first few months, these pups are simply not equipped to deal with the rough elements here. But today, Francois is satisfied. The seal population is thriving. This colony is, is quite well um, protected in a sense because of ecotourism in the last 30 years. Um, it's almost keeping a public eye on what's happening here. And the colony is actually doing fairly well. Unlike other colonies around our coastline that, that, that are not doing well and remained extinct, this one is actually flourishing in a sense. But it's totally inappropriate in the sense that if you look at the conditions today, um, this is fairly rough and, and a lot of the island gets, gets a wash. But in the, in the summer winds, uh, we get the same kind of high seas, but the winds now pick up the seas even further, so it becomes almost uninhabitable. And with the knowledge that all's well in his bay, Francois can head back home to deal with other pressing matters. Pipo has rearranged his whole room on his quest for lunch. And it's high time that Regina deals with her active young man. With his size and temperament, this is pretty much the only moment in the day that he rests and lets his adoptive mother enjoy his company. For growing Pipo, milk is now not the only thing on the menu. Meat is becoming an important part of his diet. No matter how impatient he gets, the meat has to be heated a bit, or he wouldn't touch a bite. So he needs to practice a bit of patience. Today is the first day he's getting large pieces of meat. Whether it's chicken, pork, or beef, Pipo still has to learn how to deal with this chewy new addition to his diet. After mealtime, a little exercise in the garden will hopefully get rid of some of Pipo's excess energy and gives him a chance to practice future hunting techniques on adoptive father Hansa. <laughs> Pipo's romps have escalated in the last few weeks, and Regina knows that the separation from Pipo won't be far off now. I don't even want to think about it. That's the absolute worst part of raising these babies. It's so hard that I've often said to myself, that's the last time, I can't do that again. No one can imagine how hard it is to let them go at the end. After all that dirty outdoor activity, a bath's in order. What a great way to continue to play. Teeth, claws, and soul. But one has to keep one's baby clean somehow, especially when mother's tongue would have done this job in the wild.
Wet towels and sleeves are all part of this rather damp daily exercise, but the Hamsas manage the chore with a great sense of patience and humor. Pipo just can't get enough playtime with water. Even cleanup time turns into a major test of nerves for his adoptive parents. The kettle's taking forever today. This afternoon, Amigo, TJ, and Alpha don't get a siesta because Francois has to clean the playroom thoroughly. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Oh, my baby's hungry. Oh, yeah, hungry, hungry, hungry. I'm gonna jump up here. Like any nursery, <laughs> cleanup is a necessary part of every day. Even though the pool is now empty and the pressure washer very noisy, it doesn't take the three foundlings long to continue romping around Francois's cleaning efforts and get into all sorts of scrapes. As long as they can smell their daddy Francois, their world is peaceful and happy. Once they now start to become active swimmers, which you can see is now, um, if you were here a few months prior to this, they wouldn't be swimming as actively because they don't really have a waterproof coat yet. When it comes to the rehab like this, we found the only way to effectively work with these animals is to basically become family. And, and that is the, the sort of guiding factor with us. We don't take them and prescribe to them. We, we, the way we work with them is that if we spend our rest of our lives with these three, and only these three, then that's what life, that's what we've done. Francois can now leave his triplets safe and content under the heat lamps and attempt to rescue the injured seal in the harbor once again. It's finally time for a special surprise outing for Pipo. The Hamzas have decided that it's time for him to meet eight-month-old Tigress Bianca at the Tiger Park. It's a sad moment for Regina, but she's confident that it's the right decision. He's proving that he's ready in every sense. He's happy and relaxed, and I think it will be all right when he goes to the Serengeti Park and meets Bianca, even if she is a few months older than him. He'll be all right, I hope. In order to move Pipo to the Serengeti Park for his big first date with future wife Bianca, the Hamzas will first have to figure out how to get Pipo into the carrier, with the least resistance from their suspicious family. A drive in the car isn't quite what Pipo had in mind. All those feedings haven't exactly made Pipo a light transport, but in the end, curiosity got the better of him. At least foster mommy Regina is there to keep him calm on his journey. The Serengeti Park is home to a group of white tigers, several of which used to be part of circus acts. Female tiger Bianca is the youngest tiger here. Although only eight months old, she's almost twice his size and twice as strong and dangerous. We'll put Pipo in the box next to Bianca and see what happens. If he's interested in Bianca, he'll go over to the cage. Hopefully, they'll play with the ball a bit, and that would be a good sign. If they both then purr and try to communicate, that would be even better. This is the first stage of Pipo's integration into this tiger clan. How these animals will react to one another when placed in the same pen is anyone's guess. At that point, my husband and the animal handlers will be here. I don't really want to be here when these two meet up. I don't know, they could fight. Of course, adoptive parents Regina and Hans are very curious and apprehensive at the same time. How will this first monitored meeting go? Oh, 
It looks like the two are getting along all right through the bars of the cage. Regina is relieved. It looks like tiger love at first sight. The two already look like they want to play with the ball together. All these new surroundings are making Pipo forget his adoptive mother. And with a heavy heart, proud mother Regina has to accept this positive turn of events. Even if it is very sad for her, she's raised enough cats to know that this is best for Pipo. He's ready to start life on his own. In the harbor, Francois is on his search for the hurt seal once again. It's his never-ending mission. Since that day, it's never stopped. I mean, so I've never been able to walk away uh, from what's been going on. And they basically, as I said, a large part of our business and work is to go out and find seals. But I would say by far the majority of my rescues is seals that have actually come to us. Now this guy is very nervous. He's got fishing line around him and it's badly infected. And because it's now painful, the wound, he'll keep his head above water like that and a normal seal would just dive under and swim on. But he has to wait for that neck to loosen up because uh, it's all become tight and, and encrusted with, with the infection. Ah. So you'll, uh, there's my mumpke. Mumpke. Ah. Come, mumpke. Come, come, come. Come out, Kate. Oh, this is last year's baby. Come out, Kate. Ah. 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 Francois has a fantastic success ratio, unlike so many other seal rescue stations. His understanding and gentle care is almost always successful. There's still a very close and special bond between Mumpkin and Francois, even though this young seal is already fully capable of taking care of himself in the wild. He still likes to come for an extra snack or a cuddle with Francois. Francois Hugo's love for these special creatures has saved the lives of countless seals, and he will continue to do so as long as they're threatened. And so the challenges of another day have been met head on by a man with a very special touch in the animal world. The big moment is finally here. This is Pipo's new future home. And it's not only a big moment for the cats, but also for the park. The news media is there in full force to witness this very special event. At home, Regina is waiting with more than a little trepidation. Of course I'm afraid something could happen. I mean, I know Pipo is a risk taker. I'm sure he will really jump on Bianca and put her through her paces. If Bianca puts up with that, that would be really amazing. We all just hope she will. Pipo has no idea that he's about to meet Bianca face to face, without bars. Under the watchful eye of the zoo director and the press, the big moment is now here. Is Bianca ready to teach Pipo a few lessons in tiger manners? With so much attention focused on them, it's no wonder that these two are also nervous. The big question right now is, will Pipo bug Bianca too much? And will she have as much patience and love for this little guy as the Hansons did? Bianca is twice Pipo's size, but fearless Pipo is still trying to prove that he's in charge. But Bianca is taking it all in stride and remains very gentle. She sees it all as a game, and the zoo staff see that as a very positive sign. 
Together, Pipo and Bianca will hopefully found their own family and bless the world with several more rambunctious white tiger babies. In the evening, the Hanses can watch the happy union on the news and be rightfully proud that through their love and care, Pipo now has a new family that can appreciate his wild streak. Next time on Wildlife Nannies, we visit nine-month-old koala Robiana, whose mother died in a forest fire. And Flory the Elk. This two-week-old baby was left behind by his mother and now lives with four dogs and foster father Harold in his living room. And we join Dr. Burr as he examines four new lion cub patients. <laughs>